The following is presented by CrewRoundTable.com Podcast Network. Okay. I think it's... What's I would up your brother. I would up your brother. Okay. <laughs> mute mute your phones. To you. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Send this to guys, answer. mute your phones, okay? I'm like, and, and this guy's phone is going to ring. No, it's <laughs> muted. It's yeah, muted. right. Guys, mute your phones. <laughs> Besides, the only one's going to text me. Yeah, like, beside you. Me. I'm, <laughs> sure. I'm safe for rang. now. I'm sure all your friends are happy to contact you. Right. Oh, man, are you on your penicillin? I know, oh, jeez. nothing. Oh, okay. This seems to be a four-member cast. What's in the canteen? <laughs> Liberal tears? Yep. <laughs> feeds me. It's pretty hard I saw to top that. Some, I, I, heard, I heard. I There's actually mugs like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually a mug like that. Someone. Some of my Facebook feeds saw someone drinking it. Yeah. 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 Sweet tears of butter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta find one. Okay. Neo Citrin. So. <laughs> you pass out. Oh. You get to pass out. Yes. We gotta work fast. So I don't care. We gotta work fast then. Okay. Oh man, the first one's always the toughest. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, the creative juices aren't flowing. Exactly. The the booze isn't flowing. That's the problem. There you go. And then once I'm done, I uh, set the mic here and then make sure your levels look good. What's which one am I? Uh, I think we're number one. Okay. So you're going. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you're going once around and then me. Yeah. Meeting? So I'm going to. Uh, I'll guests. introduce the, the guests. Around. And. Uh, y- here and here. Yeah, the guests go and first, then, and then uh, go Big V, and I'm gonna okay. go around. Okay. And then we're doing okay. the uh, online. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We're right. gonna do online first. <coughs> Already half an hour late. <coughs> How did that happen? Late. Oh, half an hour late. <laughs> Look in my eyes. What do you see? Welcome to the Crew Roundtable Podcast, brought to you by CrewRoundtable.com, a roundtable discussion of all the hot news affecting the greater Toronto area, featuring Big V, Marco, Gino, and JR, and now your host of the Crew Roundtable, the champ who runs the camp, Sal Champ. Good day, everyone. Welcome to the Crew Roundtable podcast. I'm your host, Sal Champ, and uh, again, welcome. This week's episode is on I- online dating. It was suggested by a listener, Christina, who's also one of our in-studio guests. Christina, say hi. Hello. Great. Welcome to the show. We also, we are also, we also have Colleen, another special guest on the program today. Colleen? Hi. Welcome. We usually go for more elaborate welcomes. <laughs> you guys, well, you, but you guys are amateurs. <laughs> but let's stuff. let's introduce the uh, our regular panel tonight or today, wherever you may be. Big V, welcome. Giggity. Fantastic. Mark, welcome to the show again. <coughs> Salam alaikum, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Salam alaikum. Uh, Gino. Uh, thank you very much, Champ, once again for having us in your beautiful home to record another episode of Crew Roundtable. This one is going to be fantastic. I'm ready to rock and roll. It is. It's going to break the glass ceiling of podcasts. JR. Hello, sir. Hello, Champ. Welcome to... Uh, I'm glad to be back. I keep welcoming you to your own house. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's twice in a row now. I know. I know. Benny, I've been living here for a few years now. I don't, have to be, I don't need the welcome. There may be parts of the house you may not have explored yet. Yeah. Well, I apparently got the, the whole of the house. I've got a, yeah, a sub basement <laughs> somewhere in here. Your son. But, yeah. But welcome. Okay. Uh, and uh, Gino, if you want to kick us off the online dating topic. Uh, yes, so thank you very much, Christina, for bringing this to us and for joining us here tonight. Um, I want to throw out some uh, some words here and see if everyone recognizes them. Uh, we've got OkCupid, Match.com, no. No. eHarmony, yes. Badoo. Anyone ever hear of that one? No. eHarmony? No, no, Badoo. I heard of Badoo. You have? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Is that, is that like, <laughs> I just is that like, like Flintstone dating? About it? The Great Gazoo meets the other space creatures? Hey, check my profile on Badoo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plenty of fish. POF. Mm-hmm. P- Zeus. More like POS. Yeah. <laughs> anyone, anyone ever hear of Zeus? I have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I have heard Christina, of that. Christina, speak up. Yes, Don't I be heard sure. of it. Yeah, there you go. And Tinder. 
Of course. Yes. Okay, so Tinder, just for those who are uh, not familiar, um, so these sites that we've just listed here, these are all online dating sites that most people in the city of Toronto and in the greater Toronto area, these are what they use to find their significant other, their soulmates, okay? Uh, now, some people may be looking for a little bit less, some people may be looking for a little bit more. Tinder alone <coughs> claims to have 50 million unique users each month. This is Canadian? So Tinder no, is now international. Okay. Tinder is international, but this is the scope that we're dealing with here. This is not um, the online dating that people may be familiar with from the early days of the internet. This is something brand new. Um, and where I want to kick off this discussion, we're going to go through the whole gamut here. We're going to go through the whole process. Uh, Christina has asked us to comment on where's the best place to use, how do you, how do you set up a profile, what do you do after, where do you meet for your first date, um, uh, what, what do you do after if you don't like the person and you want to ghosting, I think you mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Ghosting? Yeah. So we're learning a whole bunch of new words here tonight because um, uh, some of us may have used this, some of us may have used online dating, some of us have not. But the first thing that we should discuss, and I want to send it out to the table, and especially our guests, um, online dating, even today, in the research that I was doing for tonight, the number one word that always comes up is stigma. There's always something that apparently is wrong about using online dating. Uh, and, and it may be a self-selecting or a self-fulfilling prophecy because some people who use it may not want to admit that they use it. So it could be even more popular than it is, but for some reason it's not in the public consciousness. So I want to throw it out to our guests first. What do you think about the stigma that surrounds online? Um, I think there's definitely a stigma when it comes to online dating. Um, I think if you're going to be open-minded enough to try online dating, you need to kind of get over yourself. And um, I think the, the key thing there is to be open-minded. So the thing that I hear most when I talk to friends of mine who may or may not have tried online dating before, um, they always say, you know, what if I see somebody I know on there and my my reaction to that would be well you know get over it they're on there too so they're obviously <coughs> looking for something as well and uh, I think if you're open-minded then um then it shouldn't really matter what other people think what do you think I have to admit I didn't really run into a lot of it um you know I've been I did online dating three or four stints of it um, over the course of probably three or four years. Um, I was working in a fairly young office at the time, and the very first site I went on and the very first person I was matched with was a guy working three blocks, like three three cubes over. And we were just, like, mutually horrified because we had zero in common, nothing, but we just had a really good laugh over it. So I think it's... Um, I, I got to admit, it was, it was a pretty open thing. Most of my friends, you know at my age, because I'm a little bit older than some of you guys, we, a lot of us were doing this was second time around. And there was just, you know, you don't have any, you, you've let go of a lot of that stuff by then. And it's, you know, you're just, you're looking for somebody great. And this is the way to meet people. So I, I didn't run into as much of it. That said, I always think getting a recommendation from a friend for a real person that you know, is probably, you know, I'd, I'd give it a little bit of an edge over online dating. Some of what you said about uh, about the about the stigma, what both of you have mentioned, um, there is also that element where sometimes you don't want to advertise that you're looking. Mm -hmm. um, when you said that you there was someone down, you know, three <coughs> rows down from you in the office who was also looking, right? It it does kind of change the dynamic a little bit when you're when you're you know seeing each other in the hallways or doing whatever. Um, it's uh, it's before, it was seen as, I think, a place that people went when they were considered desperate, in air quotes, okay? And I think that has, is a lot of what the stigma is attached to on, on online dating in general. Because just those sites that we listed off here before, they all cater to a slightly different demographic of what people are looking for. Um, Tinder, as much as it wants to be a long-term relationship website... I don't think they're marketed as anything other than a hookup site. I don't think they ever market themselves as a dating site. Yeah. People, no. people are using it now that way. 
they were they were basically the straight version of an app called Grinder. Yeah. And Grinder, for those who are uninitiated, is actually a hookup app for gay men. Pure hookup. It's straight up hookup because uh, basically it, it it finds and this is the way Tinder works too. Uh, you're used to work when when they started. You know, you it it, it takes your GPS location it, and it matches you. With a design, with with with, uh, with it brings you up people who are in the surrounding area, in the near area. Grinder so, was Uber before there was Uber. What? When you think about it, because it did exactly what you're talking uh, about. It's it's it, it it's basically people. doing the same thing. It's yeah, really they're they're different it. facets of the same coin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they they may match you up with people who are nearby, and uh, want to. Uh, and it was purely a hookup, sex, no strings attached, sex game. Um, Tinder. Tried to do the same thing, but what what they didn't real what, what they didn't take into account is the dynamics are highly different. When two guys meet up, or you know, two random guys meet up, they're on fairly equal physical footing, you know. Not when they're bears and twinks. Well, that, but but the, mm-hmm. this is true. Uh, well, hey, come on. This you, is true, but come on, back. Generally, come on. but generally, two guys, you know, because. It's it's easy to find two guys that are approximately the same height weight, but with men and women, like women are, are high high generally tend to be highly reluctant to just go to some strange dude's house or even have some strange dude come over to their house because men are dangerous. Generally, men are very dangerous, and and you take a woman, a woman takes a huge amount of risk. Your hands are weapons. In, in, in doing that, I, I mean, I I, I, I used to, I, I didn't acknowledge it, but I, I would mentally acknowledge it, you know, when I was I, when I was online dating, you know, I'd meet up with, you know, I'd meet, have first dates with women who are significantly shorter than I am. Mm. And, Most of and, the population is significantly shorter than yeah, you. Thank you, but, be, and, and because, no, and because of that, I mean, you have to, you have to be aware of, 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 of the danger you impose. I mean, maybe I'm not a violent person, but they don't know that. So you have to, you know, you have you have to take that into account. You, that, therefore, you know, you, this may be jumping the gun uh, on, on where Christina wants to go with the college job, but you have to be aware of that, and that you know you don't ask them, "Let me pick you up," and and and, and stuff like that. You, you don't. You have to keep your. You have to, as a man, you have to keep a, a safe space uh, to to give the give your data a comfort zone. Now, in, in this scenario, I'm a straight guy who dates straight women. Uh, Although most, of the, and I think that's most of the table here. But if you happen to not be straight, this is still good, generally good advice for you uh, in the da- in the dating world. Yeah, so <clears throat> we're going to take this discussion in another direction. But I think that you overstepped quite a bit, saying uh, that men are dangerous. Number one, uh, because all of the points that you made of you know don't meet someone, don't let them pick you up. That's just good life advice. It's got nothing to do with going out and seeing a guy on the first date and saying that men are dangerous. Now, let's take a step back, actually, before we get to that first date, because you, um, I know, have some experience with this, so I really want to hear about what you have to say about first dates. Uh, Sure. But let's take a step back and start talking about um, how do you set up that profile? How do you get someone to have interest in your profile? Because I, I'll I'll be honest, I've never set one up. Um, Mm -hmm. I've never used any online dating. Uh, To be honest, a lot of it wasn't really around when I was looking. Um, otherwise, I probably would use it now. Okay. But what do you do to set up that profile? What All do right. you do to capture someone's eye? Because I've got some stats on lies as well. Okay. And I'll use that when we wrap up. Do you, uh, you do you do, do the do? George Costanza glamour shots? <laughs> For profile, oh, that's profile? exactly yeah. that's, 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 profile that, shot. That, like you get the professional. That, that's how. It, that's how. That's how we met. That, just a full disclosure. Uh, Colleen and I uh, met online about a year and a half ago, and we've been dating ever since. But um, the, the, okay, start, the first thing you need to do is get a good picture. Um, and again, this is this is probably where a lot of the stigma is. I've seen a lot of really blurry photos. You know, pictures people already had because they're kind of embarrassed. Have a friend take a picture of them. There's a lot of really crappy bathroom selfies. Uh, off. You want a headshot. Bathroom. You want a good, oh, they yeah. could, a good, clear headshot. And they could be on a date. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. And it has to be current, yes, within the for, within the last maybe one or two years, mm-hmm. um, and not a group shot. I, I've seen I've seen I've I've seen a number of group shots where they don't actually indicate which one they are <clears throat> until you see the rest of their pictures. So 
you want a clear, a good clear headshot. That that's that's key, because so no although way, no, hmm? no, yeah, it's no fuzzy, face. no <laughs> fuzzy hair uh, action going on. Well, you want to be done up, but you want to be you want to be uh, what you usually look like, right? You don't want to be getting out of bed, but you're not looking at wedding material, wedding pictures either. Let me just pause for a moment and say that he had at least five pictures of himself in cosplay with full makeup. <laughs> On his dating site, <laughs> and this guy's giving a, and this guy's giving advice. On, that, that was on, a that was a se- photos. That was a separate cat folder. But I think that's the right move. Like, that, oh. that, that, but that's me. That, that was being that, honest. It's you. It's like what you enjoy, right? And that, yeah. that's exactly the point. Be the, authentic. The Be yourself. Of honesty, though, because there's a lot of things that honest people do that you don't want to advertise. Right? There's How authentic- much do you want to? Let Colleen's it? right. The word word is authentic, mm-hmm. not honest, because you can be too honest too quick. And that, that'll turn people off. We can get we can get that more into that later. But mm. it starts with a good picture because usually what you're presented with is a list of you know uh, of the contact names and a picture. Now, looks aren't the o- aren't the most important thing. They're not the only thing, but they're the first thing you evaluate because it's the easiest to evaluate on, right? Oh, they're attractive, but that's like just the first layer. It's the easiest hurdle to evaluate, but then you've got to get to the, then you get to the profile. And I think the key word for guys is use full sentences, use full words, no elite speak. Speak no, yeah, well, no elite speak. If, if English isn't your first language, that's fine. But none of this letter U, letter R, you know. Text speak. Text speak. Are the, are the three, profiles? Three sentences. No. You want to put your personality in it. And then, and therefore, but the first thing. You, you realize that your age, that may be your Thing, I was just going to say that. That's right. For somebody about 15 to 20 years younger than you, that's probably their thing, and the women that they're looking for, it would probably be their thing. Yeah. They wouldn't even think about it. Uh, no, you guys no, got no, a point. No. You guys got a point. I got to give, give them points. Any, I got to give them 50 points for um, that. Many, many years. There's probably women right now that are 10, 15 years younger than you watching you use full sentences and saying, oh, my God, this guy's old. Listen, Big V, I can only talk to... I can, proper I, can only, English. I can only talk to people of my own age. You're a loser. I can, I, can only, I, can only speak to, I can only speak to my own age, but proper proper English does not has not turned anyone off. All right? It could. I, no, it I might. Agree it with might. That. So, the key, and this, whoa, 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 this whoa, whoa, whoa. So, go, Christina. Go, Christina. Go, go, go. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that if you're reading someone's profile and they're just like babbling on, like, no, that doesn't interest me. On to the next. But if you can see that somebody's actually articulate through what they've written, they've thought about it, and it doesn't have to necessarily be like paragraphs and stuff like that, but as long as they're getting their point across and they're articulate about it, I think that that's, you know, uh, a reason to take, you know, another look at, at the potential date. You just hope that they're that articulate when you meet them, right? Well, that's the thing. It's kind of like luck of the draw, and that's kind of where meeting in person comes into play. You have to kind of weed through the people. They're not all going to be winners, but... Um, but it's, it's fun to kind of, it's almost like a game, you know what I mean? Like you see if you can figure people out and... Uh, and is, there, is there someone like Chant distributing points? No. No. It might be... Uh, might, might be that would probably be a turn off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, if, if I could go back to the uh, profile pictures, I think a big thing that I've noticed is if you have uh, somebody who... Um, has lots of pictures of them wearing sunglasses and hats and just kind of like covering themselves up in you know in that way. Um, yes, I think you know you can look cute in sunglasses, but if every single picture they're wearing sunglasses, just move on. They're obviously hiding something. Maybe they're blind. Maybe they're blind. Maybe they have a crooked eye. Maybe they're cross-eyed. It it's happened. And um, what about people who have the same pose in every photo? Because I've seen that a lot on Facebook, where some people, no matter where they are, the context of the photo, who they're with, it's the same foes, as if they practiced, and this is the one where I look the best. That's not a thing, Eugene. Oh, that is, uh, <laughs> that I, is I, most I, assuredly a thing. I think, I think, I think because an online, online dating site only li- gives you so many photos. As long as they're good quality photos and they show you it, just because it's the same pose, I think I'd give them a pass for that. So you can't, so you don't get a, like 50 photos to look at of somebody. 
No, they they tend they, because the pictures take up storage space, so they tend to limit how many pictures you can you, you can upload. I need a timeout. All right, wrestling podcasts are a dime a dozen these days. But you want a show that you can feel is yours, and a show you can react on and react with. Well, asking you shall receive. Main Event Madness is now your reaction show, as we're live after every pay per view at eleven thirty p.m. Eastern. BlockTalkRadio.com slash pro wrestling dot biz and wrestling dash news dot net are the places to be as we have new episodes every Sunday. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Main event madness. Madness unleashed. A pro wrestling dot biz radio network production. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Listen to the Windows 10 This is where we insert there. the Loganitas commercial. He's Cold, guy. refreshing He's Loganitas. Yeah. For all <laughs> life's <laughs> ills. That's right. I'm calling. Perfect. Oh, nice. You, you got the, you got the audio. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so where were we? So you were you were talking about the, the putting up putting up the right photo. Yes, um, the, a good quality photo is. That I actually saw someone who apparently said they were a graphic designer. Their picture was sideways. No, that's I, just. I, not, I that's could just not, not take them seriously <laughs> after that. And I didn't message them. I'm like, this is no way. <clears throat> like, any, anyone who's... The picture has to be vertical, people. And the, <laughs> I, no, no. It, it, you'd be surprised. The excuse that you can't use a computer is not correct. Because you can... It's very easy to run... And you can look it up online how to, how to rotate a picture. It, it's not that <laughs> difficult. I've seen more, more sideways profile pictures than I bear to, by, bear to, by to recall. Really? Oh, yeah. I was about it, to it, say it, maybe it was, it was just so Benny, some... Uh, so, Benny, are you saying, saying that it's so humor. hard for you to just basically tilt your head? Well, that's no. not the point. You're representing yourself. You know. So, the photo we've taken care of. Yes. What do you put in the description to make someone stop and give you that extra three seconds of attention to maybe make your profile the one that they choose? Um, what do you write in there? Okay, you, you need, more content is better than less. Uh, it should be written in your voice. Don't, you know, d- don't don't do you like pina colada these people. Like talk talk as if you were like the, from the song. The song's about a. I don't think anyone about, else besides me gets that reference. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, Colleen gets it. Okay. That, 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 you know, that, that's old. You know, the, the pina colada song. If anyone remembers, is about this guy who puts an online ad to cheat on his wife and then he meets up with a woman and turns out it's his wife who's also trying to cheat on him and they rekindle their love and but it's a very it, you know but if you listen it, it's a very it's a terrible terrible song it's a with terrible a catchy song island with an rhythm old, with an old school <laughs> old school kind of love want ad writing to it but you want to read you're, you're writing par- oh, full nice. paragraphs full, full sentences and you talk about yourself the stuff you're into you know, if you're not into stuff, maybe you need to start learning and getting more passionate stuff because people want to be uh, stuff. Be passionate. If you've traveled, talk about where. Mention some places you traveled. You know, leave some room for people to ask you a question about it. But if you like traveling, do you like woodworking? You know, I like woodworking my hands. Put in a picture of some of the projects you've made. You know, uh, maybe you like the, uh, sports. Talk about the sports you like. Talk about yourself and talk about it in your own voice. You don't want to sound like you're a sale, like a used car salesman. You want to be, you want, you want, you want genuine passion, genuine, genuineness, authenticity, and passion about the things you do in your life. You know, demonstrate genuine interest. My questions about these profiles, are they long? Like how, like. Mine was really long, actually. Mine was at least five or six. And you completely now. filled it out. You're, you didn't go just oh, yeah, put I some felt, gibberish. Yeah. No, no, I, I completely yeah, whatever, filled it out. Yeah, whatever, you know. I you know I went back every I, w- I did go back every six or s- six to eight months and update it you know mm-hmm. if I took a new trip I'd uh, I'd throw that in if I started doing car- I started doing karaoke at one point I put that put a paragraph in about that you know you know as you learn and start doing new things and have new experiences keep the up to, keep the profile fresh I mean if you if you only mention a trip you took to Italy about seven years ago. No, no, it's going to look like an abandoned profile. So uh, constantly, so it's not like a, a resume where you update it and you're always at the top of the list. Is, does it work like that? You think? You think there's algorithms that like, oh, this is an active profile. Yes, yeah. it's hundred oh, yeah? percent like that. Oh, the more okay. active you are, the because what they'll do is when you log in. My experience is only with Plenty of Fish. Uh, no, sorry, I started with Plenty of Fish. 
but my the primary experience was was OK Cupid, and yes, the more active users get put top, get, get get shut to the top of the of the match list, uh, and they get they get they you know, they show you a list of the people who your best match and who are the most active, and they'll be on your first screen full, and yeah, if you if you're more active, if you're messaging people, if you're updating your profile, you get pushed to the top of the uh, you know activity list, and that it's a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, like location, location, location. That's what they say. <laughs> Activity. Yes. One of the arguments I came across uh, while I was putting stuff together for the show is that online dating, apparently, does lead to more hookups and less long-term relationships because it's almost like there's a supply and demand factor happening where you know exactly how many people are interested so if you're in demand you get to pick and choose right if you're out there and you're meeting people in a traditional way it's a lot harder because online you can meet a million people in the blink of an eye right there are that there is that argument does that do you do you think that that plays any factor i i think i think it's the attitude you go in with like if you want if you're finding a lot of hookups it's because that's what you want Wait, that's what you want, or that's what other people are no, looking that, for? No, if, if 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 a person is getting, so I'm not I mean you as in yourself. If a person is getting a lot of hookups on online dating, that's because that's what they want to find. You know, you're self directing the scenario. You know, it doesn't just happen like, oh my god, I wanted I wanted to meet the woman in dreams, and all I got is a whole you know sixteen one night stands in a row. It's because it's because it's because you're, you're looking for that. And you're you're agreeing to it. It's, you know, it's a lot of consent. You're consenting to a lot of this. So it, it you know okay, maybe maybe the, you know maybe some people are only maybe the other person is only on there because they want something casual. Usually they'll put that in their profile though. You know that that's the kind of stuff you would put in your profile. Whether you're looking for something long term or if you're if you're looking for something more casual. That's so. It's maybe some would some would argue that's a little too honest, but you know something the other person may need. That's actually it, it, it's how you. It's how you word it that makes it crude or not. Can other people see how many people are interested in you? No, you you, you might be able to see how many people have visited you, uh, if that unless that gauge is interest. Usually, the the way you get interest is how many messages you get. And as a word to guys, the disparity between messages you send and the messages you see, receive are immense. You know. What do you mean disparity? You will get maybe one or two messages, uh, you know, in, uh, messages a month, depending on you know what you look like and how well your your, your profile is written. Uh, women will get hundreds, hundreds, hundreds a month. Mm-hmm. Like uh, there, there's been there's a couple of like uh, so I've seen I've seen a have co- read a couple of articles where guys go on. They took some you know really sexy women pictures and they set up a fake profile, and then within seconds of it going live. It, the, the messages just flood in. How you doing? What's up? How you doing? Want to hook up? One line, ridiculous messages. But they're all sleaze messages. Some of them might be real, but most of them are sleazy messages. Okay. And you have to realize that this is what the this is the what the, the women you're messaging are getting are also getting flooded with. So and they've got to slog through a lot of this. You know, and then a lot of uh, they, if, actually, if you're, this is this is gets this gets into our message, the messaging section, and uh, before we end this, you might want to go back to our episode on online comments, um, where we talked about how it's really easy to rip somebody apart when you're not talking to their face. Th- that that mantra pr- applies ten thousand percent online dating. It's it's a very personal. Uh, scenario and rejection stings and it, it becomes really easy to unleash a lot of poison on someone when you're not looking her in the face you don't even have to think about it and you can just say something that you think is just an offhand comment but it's going to stick with somebody it could even drive them off of the dating site i mean i think the best advice i can give it's it's personal but it's not personal so yeah, what you said is exactly right. Rejection really hurts. Nobody likes to get it. Nobody likes that to happen to them. Um, but it's also a numbers game. And that's the unfortunate reality. It is, as, as you described, a very different experience for men and women. Um, 
So I think if you find that it's starting to get to you, which it can, you have like three or four or five or a dozen bad dates in a row, um, you know, you message a dozen girls and none of them write you back. If you feel yourself starting to get bitter and angry, take a break. That's the best advice I can give. If you feel like you're going to start acting on those bad feelings towards other people, you start writing snarky messages, you're really rude in your messaging exchanges, you find you're losing your temper or saying things you wouldn't normally say in person, time to take a break. Take a big step back. If you're getting super down on yourself and hating on yourself, take a step back. Take a month break. I took vacations all the time, all the time from online dating. Take a few months, come back, try again. I just, I just want to reach out to the, the other guys out there. Um, if you have a friend whose online dating is not going successfully and he starts like really digging into the women he's talking to, you can s- sympathize with him, but <clears throat> don't enable that behavior. You know, you got to turn the conversation with, well, yeah, maybe they weren't for you, but, you know, you got to keep trying. You got to keep, yeah. don't start parroting their comments like, oh, yeah, she was a total bitch and she's just, she's just looking for, for cash and some bullshit like that. Don't parrot their depression back to them and think it's going to make them feel better. You're going to amplify their feelings and it's going to get taken out on some unsuspecting, uh, unintentional woman. Who's tr- who just isn't interested in this person, you know. Um, the, the primary way to, the best way to approach online dating is, is know thyself, okay? Know who you are and realistically know who is going to be attracted. When you're reading somebody's profile, if you're, for example, let's say you're a hunter. You, you like to go out and you like to hunt ducks. If the, pers- if, if, if the person you're messaging is a vegetarian, or she, she has pictures of her pet birds. They're not going to be into you. And, 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 it's just not the, and, it's, and it's definitely not the forum to lecture someone on their choice, their lifestyle choices. Right? If they're vegetarian and they don't want to... They don't, they don't, be realistic of whether or not the person in this picture... The, the woman in the profile. And read the profile. Don't message someone just because of their fucking picture. Read the profile and learn about them and... And do an honest judgment if you really think you're a match. You know, if you like, if you're if you're into video games and the person you're reading is very athletic, plays baseball, jogs th- three times a day, you're probably not going to be a match. And if you're going to message them, you're going you're either not going to get a response, or you're going to get a polite rejection. And you're you're kind of setting yourself up for for that. Is that a problem of too much information too soon? No, it, it's it's usually a, uh, it, it's usually a problem of not not using the information you're being given. The, the too much information is really good. I find if you're really paying attention to the profiles, you can fil- you can do your own filtering before messaging and, and message someone you realistically think you you would have something in common with. You know, Colleen mentioned something earlier that uh, that I wanted to come back and touch base with because uh, when she was mentioning about the rejection taking a break from taking a break from the online world taking the we called it a vacation right um, there was a study done recently where they went through five personality traits and they tried to determine which one would have the greatest correlation to whether someone would use online dating or not and I, I find it odd because it's almost ironic that the the number one uh, trait which would make someone use online dating is rejection sensitivity. So people who don't want to be rejected in the real world, they will tend to go and use the online dating. But with the amount of information that's going out there, if they get that rejection coming back from the online world, then they may take, you know, take that vacation. They may do, or they may, uh, uh, like JR was saying, you don't want to parrot someone's words back to them saying, oh, there's a big, it's just, no, that person just was not for you. Right. Like it, I think you also got to help out someone when they're on there and they're coming to you and they're asking for your opinion and you're getting, they're asking for, you know, your personal experiences and things like that. Uh, the stuff you said about not feeding into that rejection, uh, cycle, I think was just brilliant because that makes complete 100% sense. You're, you're meeting these people, you're having that first date. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Right. Um, meeting people in the real world is hard. Going up to someone cold and starting a conversation with them, having an engaging conversation, that is an art. That is, 
that is something that most people cannot do. That, that's precisely why I got into online dating. I could not do it. And, and the other benefit is, the other people on online dating are saying they want mess. They're saying that they're available and they're looking for somebody. If you if you if you if you meet see someone at the supermarket, you have no idea what scenario they're in. They may have already been hit on six times this day, and you're she's about to give you a load of whoop ass because she's just sick and tired of it. She could be married. She could be just not interested in seeing anybody right now. You don't know, and that's the benefit of online dating. It takes that one level of mystery out. And at least, <laughs> you know when it is really easy to speak with someone though. <laughs> you know when it is really easy to meet break. someone. If you're when when I was when I was smoking, you go out and you bum a cigarette off someone, you bum a light off somebody, you're their best friend for ten minutes. I'm telling you, it's just it's a world of difference when you're speaking with someone and you know I got ten minutes. I'm gonna make chit chat and small talk with this person. You meet so many people, it's almost like speed dating. It was ridiculous. But, anyways, um, you're right. Not everyone can. Not do that. everyone. Not everyone can do it. You gotta practice. I went through many packs of cigarettes, and to, but you know, go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say, I think it's easier to deal with rejection when you're not invested mm. in the person. Um, just sending off a bunch of messages to random people and seeing who messages you back. That's kind of the approach that I took, um, and um, I think when. <coughs> you're in the real world it's a whole different ball game somebody can message you and it's totally fine but if they come up to you in person it's almost weird like it's not socially acceptable anymore to approach strangers and try to have a conversation that way so I think in that way um, that's why online dating is a little bit easier for certain people like you were saying not everybody has that ability to go up to somebody and initiate a conversation so the meeting a stranger so at some point the goal is we've gone through setting up the profile we've gone through what you put in your profile the picture getting someone to stop and look at you right mm -hmm. getting that extra three seconds before they swipe right yeah. now you made a match with somebody no no i think we're skipping a step the first message you see someone you like first message the go next ahead. thing we're going to talk is the first message okay this okay, this is this is how I would advise guys to do to do this. One, don't message just on the picture. We've already said that. Read the profile. You like this person. When you write write more than just hi, more than how you doing. You have to introduce yourself. At least a paragraph, maybe two or three short ones. Not more than that, but not less. Not a whole lot less. Just saying hi means you're not going to get a response, hundred percent. Um, try not to talk about what they look like. Don't say that I thought you were really pretty. Don't say, you know, you look really hot, you're smoking about. They already know you think they're attractive and they know that's part of the reason you're, you're, you're messaging them. And therefore, just saying that, again, just saying that is kind of lazy. Talk about stuff that you read in their profile. If they like to travel and you like to travel, ask where they've been. If you if they listed off a play, a bunch of places where they've been, ask how ask you know how was you know Milan or how was Iceland? What brought you there? That's a kind of a different place that nobody really goes to. Talk about that. If they like to run marathons, ask what kind of marathons they've run. Maybe maybe she likes fishing. Ask where she likes to fish. You never know. There there there's lots of women, especially in northern Ontario, that like hunting. You know. The further outside of the city you get, the more, kind, more, more popular that kind of stuff is across all the sexes, both sexes. So it's got to be based on her profile. Ask questions. Reveal a little bit about yourself so that she can respond with a question to you. And therefore, and that's how the conversation goes back and forth. So before, uh, before Champ takes us once around the table, the last item that uh, we have not touched on that Christina wanted us to speak about where do you go for that first date? You meet people. What do you do? Where do you go? How do you make that? A, how do you set up to be a successful first date? Would you okay, go if, if I would... Subway. Sandwich? I would say that's perfect. <laughs> you know Just why? a six-inch. Just a six-inch. <laughs> and there's Big V. There he is. <laughs> do you know why He's that's awake. a good first date? Is because it's, there's no commitment. You're not investing too much time. If it doesn't go well, you're not 
stuck with the person all night long. Um, so like something quick, like a coffee or like a <coughs> beer or something like that, um, on a weeknight is probably best because you have a quick out. Like, you know, if you're not feeling the person, you can be like, oh, you know, I gotta get up early, go to work, well, whatever. Um, you don't wanna waste a weekend on a first date that's not going well. A weekend? What do you What do you mean? Like, like I wouldn't want to go on a Saturday first date on a Saturday night when I could be out with my girlfriends. I'd rather probably be doing that than be on a bad first mm-hmm. date. Do you know what I mean? I can invest, you know, an hour or two on a Wednesday night, and if it's not going well, no biggie. So the best first date is just meeting for booze? No, no, like a coffee or... Or a drink. You know, I think it depends on... I base it on how, how well the conversation goes. Well, no, no. This is the first date. So you're yeah. not, you haven't really spoken before that, have you? Yeah, you're messaging back and forth. You're messaging, but now, you're not... There's no nuance. There's no personal affectation. There's no... It's, the, it's all might, written, right? It's all written, but you, you're getting a sense of whether you like this person or not, whether there's an interest. And I, I, I would advise, get off the messaging sooner than ready. If you get four to five, th- four to five really good, meaty messages back and forth it's time to suggest meeting up for for meeting up in the real world don't message for weeks upon weeks upon weeks on end because that's just it's a there's a it's there's genuine but it's a little artificial because you're measuring your words you can really think about what you're saying get get a couple of good messages back and forth and when you see that there's the other part that you're both putting effort into your messages meet up it's kind of like sales you know, you wanna you wanna well, sell right away. You are you, are you are you are you are selling you are selling you are selling yourself because. <laughs> but then great. the sale goes cold if you if you keep waiting. Weeks. Well, you're, no, we, no, no, no. It, it's not that it goes cold. It's just that you get you put you put more and more expectation on this date, and you know, great messaging does not auto, not automatically mean chemistry in real life. It's mm. just an increased chance of chemistry in real life, and then you meet up and you have nothing to talk about. So. Um, yeah, you don't want to waste a whole lot, of, uh, more than a month and a half, more, you don't want to wait at waste a whole month of messaging to find that you really don't have chemistry in real life. But if you, if you see that there's, everyone's putting effort into the messages, it's time to suggest, uh, where, where, where suggest the meetup. Now, uh, for the guys, I would suggest that you demonstrate some effort in picking the date, even if she's the one that happened to suggest meeting up, you know, come up with some ideas and don't ask where they live. Use the phrase where in ter- or, or whatever, where in town is most convenient for you to meet. You know, they don't reveal where they live because, you know, we're going back to the topic. They, they, they want to, they generally going to, <laughs> want to keep that a secret from people they don't know. Never offer to pick them up. That's just not that because that goes uh, uh, on the same track. Just ask, where is most convenient for you to meet? What general area works best for you? And pick some, pick two or three places in that area and make a suggestion. You know, if she wants to meet somewhere else, you know, be flexible. But don't pick anything, don't pick anything expensive. You know, moderate to low, you know, coffee, you know, light, you know, a non fancy restaurant, maybe a pub at is, most. Uh, is, do you pick is, up? Is, is, oh. I was going to say, is the woman even taking out her wallet? That yeah, night? do you pick uh, up the top there, you know JR? What, modern. modern uh, do they? Colleen? <laughs> so, yeah, see, I want to hear. Again, I think it, it, this is where being authentic is important. Um, you do what you think is right for you. Um, I personally never expected a man to pay. On the first date, I'm I'm a career woman. I make my own money. Ninety nine percent of the time, the guy sitting across the table from me didn't make as much money as I did. There was no call for them to be paying the bill. If they offered, that's a nice gesture. Sometimes I would say yes. Sometimes I would say no. Um, that said, I know other women where it is important, and it's that's where authenticity comes in. If you're looking, and I'm going to be like no judgment here. If you're looking for a guy with, with who's going to pay the bills in life, if you want someone like that, then yeah, you probably do want the guy to pay the bill. And you should know what you want. Even if it's hard to ad- admit it publicly, maybe it's not a very socially acceptable idea, at least know what you want. Because there's no point in, in getting together with somebody who's not going to give you what you need. 
So for me, no, I did not. Um, I had no expectations that the man would pay. Um, and, you know, my wallet was out on the table and the credit card got thrown in the dish and it was 50 50. Hmm. I can't remember. Did you pay the bill? I think uh, you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the truth comes out, yeah. as it does well, always on the round table. Yes. yes. She did offer and I did politely decline. But, guys, if she, if she offers a second time, don't decline it. It's because she actually wants she wants to leave this this date without any obligations. Well, hold on, Jared. Let Christina in on this. No, I I would agree. I think that it depends. Um, it's nice for him to to offer, um, but it's not expected. I think a good rule of thumb is whoever invites the person out or mm. does the asking mm-hmm. out should probably pay. Yeah. Um, in my experience, I always made a point of arriving to the venue before my date, just as like, um, just so that I was already settled and I wasn't frantically looking for the person. If you're there and you're, you know, they can come to you. So if it was a coffee date, then I would usually just buy my own tea or whatever. Great idea. Um, and have that already situated, and then when he came over, then he would get his and and whatever. If it's a bar, it might be a little bit different. It, it kind of just depends on the situation and how it's going. I think you made a good point. If she insists on paying her part, it's probably not necessarily that she's not interested, but there's no commitment there, and you're not obligated for anything. Yeah, um... Say, um, anyway, so, uh, last for words. I know, I know, I forgot what my next step ran out. He used up his quota. Okay, let's <laughs> he, he just, he just doesn't want to let her rip because you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so, the uh, last thing that I would like to say is um, just this is according to the eHarmony website, uh, which I think, again, may speak to the stigma that seems to be uh, attached to online dating. Um, 30% of Canadians are looking to meet others online, okay? And they use online dating. Um, The online scene is growing. Now, of course, again, according to eHarmony, so your mileage may vary, but uh, it's used by slightly more men than women. So we've got a pretty split pool of people uh, using the uh, the online dating. Um, 50%, 50% of people lie on their profiles, that, my friend, is a recipe for disaster. That's right. straight from eHarmony. Especially, especially the height. <laughs> Guys, unfortunately, the reality of the scenario is... You have to put your height on there? Some of them do. Some of them do. And a lot of women, unfortunately, don't date a man who's shorter than she is. Uh, it's, 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 it's near universal. Uh, not, not everyone's like that, but it's fairly... It's. It, I gotta say, it's probably pushing ninety percent plus. Well, you don't have that issue. I don't have that issue, and I, I did, I, and that, and that d- it did giant, benefit me. But unfortunately, that's average. that is a problem. Don't say you're a higher, you're taller than you're not, because the instant she walks in and sees that you're not, you started with a lie. You're either risking. You're already setting up a very bad date because mm-hmm. the lie is apparent right away. If she's particularly offended, she'll just walk out and never tell you she even arrived. But that's partic- I don't think a lot of women do that. But it, it starts the, it starts the date off on a very sour note. You yeah. bring a you bring a ruler. <laughs> no. Beat your stick. Uh, I would I would Beat agree stick, with you. Like I think cane. that if you're going to be lying Beat on your profile, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you're on there to meet somebody, like make a genuine connection, and you start lying about things, then you're just wasting your time. Because once you meet in person, then obviously they're going to know that you're a liar. So where is it going to go from there? And yeah. the number one uh, place to meet people, according to people on eHarmony, the number one way to meet people is through a friend by a huge margin. I don't know what that says about people who are using eHarmony. It seems to be a little bit of a defeatist attitude, I think, if you're on there and you still think the number one way to meet people is through a friend. I think it is. It's it's like it's like. Is there a best way to meet people nowadays? I still think that a, re- a f- referral by a friend, someone that you know and trust, is always your first choice. Um, unfortunately, you don't always get your first choice. In regards to what we talked about earlier about um, about lying on your profile, really important not to get invested 
until you've met the person in person and you've had a chance to make sure that they are telling the truth. Um, I've heard numbers like 40% of the people on some dating sites are married. Um, looking for looking uh, for there extra are some There are some websites that I have higher. omitted. Uh, so we have not spoken about Ashley Madison. We have not spoken about Sugar Babies because I don't think that's exactly the, dis- the topic that we wanted to discuss. But those people, again, are disclosing. Right. It's about lying. Now, I don't approve. I'm not a, a fan of Ashley Madison. Ashley I, Madison I have, is not about disclosing. <clears throat> I, have a bit fr- I have friends who are <clears throat> on that site. <laughs> so do I. Um, but at least when you're shopping on that site, you know what you're getting. Mm-hmm. Actively lying and saying that you're single when you're married um, or that, you know, you're separated and everybody knows except your partner that you're still living with, um, you know, don't get invested. Keep those, trust your gut. If you see the red flags come popping up, (coughs) trust them because they're probably, you're probably right. And if you've got it wrong, well, then you gave yourself a little bit of extra angst for no good reason. Um, But it happens. It happens to, I think, just about everyone who does online dating and you just, it's again it's personal but it's not personal don't get invested until you've met a real person i would say that um meeting someone through a friend is great but um i think if you're meeting somebody online sometimes you get to meet people who you wouldn't necessarily get to Mm -hmm. meet in other circumstances if you're meeting through friends you're kind of limited to the pool of people that that they know Chances are, if you, if your friend has a single friend and, you know, you're going to meet at some point. It, it would have already happened. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? But when you're online, you're kind of exposed to different kinds of people and um, you can, you know, you might hook up with somebody who you never would have normally even, you know, thought twice about in the real world. So I think it just goes back to being open-minded and and you, you get out of it what you put into it. Very true. All right, and that's my cue to uh, close up another discussion here on the Crew Radio, uh, uh, the Crew Roundtable podcast. <coughs> First, I'm going <clears> to <throat> reintroduce our guests here. Um, the format is you have uh, a couple minutes for some closing words. All right. Uh, Christina, any closing words? Can you come back to me? <laughs> For sure. Colleen, For sure. looks like you're first. Colleen, <laughs> closing words? Um, yeah. I just, because I'm going to say this, because everybody knew I said it at the beginning. Uh, gentlemen, do not send unsolic- unsolicited pictures of your junk to ladies. <laughs> <laughs> In case any of you don't know that, penises. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Don't do it. It doesn't work. Now, right. Again, leaving the morality aside and what kind of like horrid cretin you are that you would actually think that would be something that women want to see and, you know, what the implications of it are, it just doesn't work. Mm. If, if a woman says, yes, please do send me a photograph of your junk, then go to town. Um, until then, no, just no. Oh my, what a big nose you have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and if, you. If you think all these horrible anecdotes are being made up, it's no, it's because they've happened to all of us. <laughs> Thank you, Colleen. Point total for the evening plus 750 points. Thank you for joining us. Are you ready now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. Christina, go ahead. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, so I just want to say thanks to all of you guys for having me here tonight. Um, it's been fun chatting. Um, for the ladies who are listening, I would just say if, you, if you're if you thinking about uh, trying online dating, just go for it. There's, there's no commitment involved. Um, you know, um, just have fun with it. Don't take it too seriously. And, um, you know, it, it, if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. That's fine. But if it does, then it's worth it. Thank you. And plus 750 points for you as well this evening. And now, Big V, any closing words? Uh, unfortunately, I haven't had any experience with regards to online dating. Um, so I found this, uh, sorry, I didn't contribute much to this podcast. However, I, I did uh, enjoy uh, listening and found it very interesting and uh, enlightening on with, your, with regards to uh, different people's experiences, which happens to be about three people here. Uh, but uh, it was very informative, and uh, that's about it. Fantastic. And uh, 125 points for your total tonight. Hey, Mark. Hey, hey, you give me 75 for the beer, too. And I gave you 50. 125. <laughs>
<laughs> Mark, any closing um, words? Yeah. So my advice is for everyone to watch the episode of WKRP in Cincinnati where Herb Tarlick garners the business of a computerized dating system. <laughs> my God, how old are you? You're older than oh, Benny. Let me explain. It gets better. <laughs> So, of course, all the women who you're being set up with are prostitutes, but that's another story. (laughs) But what I wanted to share was when Herb approached the station manager, Andy, to why not put in his profile and see who he gets set up with, Andy said, no, Herb, I meet women the old-fashioned way. I pick them up in bars. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Mark. 200 points for the evening. However... Minus a thousand points for um, tardiness. <laughs> oh, okay. Gino. Uh, so uh, I I want to say that uh, much like Big V, I found tonight's discussion to be very enlightening. Um, there was there's so much going on with the world of online dating, and it seems like sometimes even the people involved in it they don't want to admit that they're doing it. Um, it's hard to get a real idea of what's going on unless you kind of plug your nose and dive right in. Uh, and I hope that some of the items that we've discussed tonight help people if they're going to dip their toe in the water and uh, helps you stay away from you know, some of the catfishes out there. Um, the key takeaways from tonight seems to be start smoking and put up a good profile picture and uh, talk about what someone else has done. And that first date, keep it simple. And no junk. And no junk. That's right. Thank you, uh, Gino. Uh, 400 points uh, for your uh, total tonight. JR, closing, uh, closing thoughts? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it really comes down to, 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 uh, to two points. You know, know thyself, as I said before, slash you know, be authentic. And don't be a dick. You know, Colleen said it's a numbers game. Your, your, your success rate, your match rate is going to be really low. But, it, you know, you're still going out. You're still meeting new people. You can still have... Great conversation and not be a match. That's been, that was my experience. You're meeting new people. You know, use it up as an opportunity to, to see different parts of the city, to do stuff you want you really want to do. And if you don't if if they don't if they don't want to see or if you don't want to see them again, don't get angry about it. it, it it's hurtful, and that's what's going to happen when you open yourself up to meeting somebody else. That's a risk you take. You know, there's no good, you know, everyone complains that there's, oh, they didn't reject me right. There's no good way to reject you. It's always going to be wrong because it always, it does hurt. So try to take that into account. And, 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 and as Colleen said earlier, take a break. If it's starting to become emotionally grating on you, walk away from it, you know, put your account on hold and live your life a little bit, go hang out with your friends and then come back, back to it with a fresh perspective. Don't you think ghosting is the wrong way to reject somebody? It's a bad. It's it's a bad way. Uh, I mean, basically, they're telling you exactly what they think. Relatively speaking, it, it's it's probably one of the worst ways. Well, no, there are worse ways. Someone could turn around. It could uh, could instead of saying, "Oh, I wasn't feeling anything," you know, they could turn around and and, and rhyme off every reason that they don't want to see you again. That's particularly shredding. True. You're not entitled to a reason after a few dates. Don't force the other person to be rude and to be hurtful. They say they wasn't feeling anything. Just thank them. Appreciate that it's a difficult message to send. Rejecting somebody is not easy, especially when you know that they're gonna, it's going to hurt them. So appreciate that they actually did send you a goodbye message and that didn't ghost you. And, but never ask why, because you're not entitled to that answer. Well, Do you think if they... If- if they tell you why, it'll help you later on. Uh, no, because it, it, in the beginning, it's just chemistry, and, and you don't, you actually don't, want, you you want that list. You don't actually do want that list because it's a, it's a very, it's all going to be full of negatives, and I don't think you need that negativity after two after one date. You know, if it's if you were in a relationship and then you wonder why it didn't work out, you have a conversation about that. But in the beginning, you're not you're not entitled to because it's a. It's, it, right, in the beginning, it's just a it's just a feelings kind of thing. You don't want to create animo- You don't want to start an animosity laden conversation because no, you don't want to talk to you. Any- they don't want to talk to you anymore. What if you're like five dates in? Does is it different? 
No, you don't need to write an essay to get out of a date, to get out of a relationship. All right? they, they're not entitled to have to write you a five-page double-spaced uh, thesis on why the scenario didn't work. You're no, not entitled to that I answer. think that you're, you're sending a message that it's okay to just disappear. No, no. I'm saying you can state that it's not working out. Okay. But you don't get to, tell, uh, you don't get to ask that person, why aren't you going to see me again? They're not entitled to give that but to But some you. sort of notification that, you know, oh, no, I'm yeah, not yes, intending no, to I'm, move forward with this. I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that wasn't required. You sh- if you don't feel, if you're not feeling uh, in the scenario, you should maybe even volunteer and just say, hey, it was great to meet you. Um, I had a great time. And my favorite line that I, I, I picked up, I wasn't feeling a romantic connection. I think that, you know, you don't say, I don't like you. I don't, you don't have to, it's a, it's a, it's it's a little negative, but not too negative, you know. But yeah, never, never respond. I mean, if you get, if you receive that response, don't want to say why, because you're not. That's there's no why in there. It's just a feeling, and you don't want. And the, the, these people already don't want to talk to you anymore. You know, they're 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 saying they're not interested in you. You can't force the conversation to continue because then they will ghost you. If you ask why, there's a good, there's a there's a probably a high percentage that you're not going to get that answer. And you're going to force them to, uh, on ghosting to you. Don't force the conversation to go further than it already is. Thank them for their comment. I appreciate it. I understand this was a difficult message for you to send. Good luck out there. And then never speak to them again. Thank you, uh, JR. Uh, your point total, 600 points. But uh, I'm going to penalize you for going past your limit, just like on the Academy Awards. I got interrupted. Uh, no. I had to share my time with two people. Uh, did you? What? Yes. I don't know. Gino got interrupted and we had another conversation. So. Well, I'm not going to take points away from Christina. <laughs> oh, no, from she's our guest. special guest. From the oh, guest. So special I've got to take, I'm gonna take away from points you. are indestructible. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to take them away from you. And for um, future guests, where can they find us? So, um, and thank you, JR, for those uh, really uh, great closing comments. You're welcome, so uh, for those of you that uh, may have found this podcast uh, floating somewhere on the uh, ether, uh, you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Google Play, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn app. We also have our lovely website, crew radio, um, crewroundtable.com. And uh, if you want to support the show, uh, don't forget to, to uh, buy your shit from Amazon through our link on our website. It doesn't cost you any more, and we get a really nice commission on, on the deal, but it does not change the price of your purchase. That's right. And if you wish to give us a topic that you watch, that you want us to discuss, much as Christina did tonight, you can find us on Twitter using the hashtag AskTheCrew. Thanks for joining us. Peace.